You know those moments from your past that you can recall with picture-perfect clarity in an instant? Some of those moments for me include breaking my leg when I was three years old, which is probably my earliest memory, or finding out that I'd finally made the dance team in high school, or getting married, and the birth of my three kids. These moments hit you like a ton of bricks. And then there's those moments that hit you in a different way, a way that shakes you to your very core. One of those times for me was reading these words for the first time. Beloved children of the restoration, your continuing faith adventure with God has been divinely led, eventful, challenging, and sometimes surprising to you. By the grace of God, you are poised to fulfill God's ultimate vision for the church. Doctrine and Covenants, section 164, verse 9. I was sitting on my bright red couch with a cup of tea in my hand. My baby was napping and my toddler twins were probably pulling things off the bookshelves. I could not focus on anything else because I had read those words. You see, I was in the midst of my own wrestle with God. I wasn't sure if there even was a God. I wouldn't have called it a faith adventure at that point because it felt more like a crisis. I was angry and I was hurt. Reading these words from the Doctrine and Covenants was electrifying because you see, I'm a child of the Restoration. My family's roots go back to Kirtland, Ohio. They were pioneers who had left their homeland for this new faith movement that was being birthed. The story of the Restoration is also the story of my family. It is the story of my faith and that faith worked for me until it suddenly didn't. The story I grew up with, my church's story, my family's story, became a bit more complicated, less binary and more blurred. I had been taught to believe that it was either all true or all false, which meant that when I started living in the gray area and began to question what I thought I knew, I didn't have a community I could walk with through the wilderness. But I had been given a book that continued the story, Community of Christ, Doctrine and Covenants. At that time, this section was the latest and greatest, hot off the press by a few years, but I truly felt like it was written for me. I was a beloved child of the Restoration and nothing could take that away from me. This story is in my DNA and I couldn't do anything to change that. Since I couldn't run away from it, I was suddenly asking myself questions like, could my faith crisis really be part of a larger adventure with God? And what if my walk with the restoration isn't quite over yet? I was beginning to ask myself these questions, but I had only experienced God in a very specific and isolated way. God played by the rules. And this new path I was beginning to discover seemed to be breaking all of those rules. I could have easily missed it had I not let go and surrendered myself to divine grace. As the late Rachel Held Evans put it, it seems those most likely to miss God's work in the world are those most convinced they know exactly what to look for, the ones who expect God to play by the rules. That was almost me, but because of the persistent love of key ministers and treasured friends, I began to see God showing up and breaking all the rules. As my journey with Community of Christ continued over the next few months, it became clear to me that this community was becoming my community. I was captivated by the focus on peace, so impressed by the responsible study and interpretation of scripture. The enduring principles, especially the worth of all persons, left a lasting impression on me. Although my faith had shifted, I realized that I still had worth and God hadn't left me. I was still worthy of the Spirit's presence and in the midst of all my shortcomings, I was still good. Since that time, over five years ago, I've walked with seekers in and around my congregation and with the help of the internet, I've encountered seekers all over the globe. 
these seekers have stories that sound just like mine, and they are finding a home in this faith community. Lives have been changed as they embrace the all of who they are, freeing themselves from shame, feelings of worthlessness, and instead accepting that who they are will always, always be good enough. This message and mission of Christ impacts real people in real ways. Whether it's lived out through a college student allowing herself to fall in love with a woman, whether it's a single mom who just got accepted into grad school so she can become a mental health professional helping and healing others, or whether it's a seeker who is becoming the first member of Community of Christ in his country with big hopes to grow the church there. I have seen the gospel change lives over and over and over again. Doctrine and Covenants 164 was written for the church at large, but I also think it speaks to us as individuals. Your faith adventure with God has been divinely led eventful, challenging, and sometimes I bet even a little surprising. The verse continues, by the grace of God, you are poised to fulfill God's ultimate vision for the church. When your willingness to live in sacred community of Christ's new creation exceeds your natural fear of spiritual and relational transformation, you will become who you are called to be. Again, I remember reading these words clear as day. When your willingness exceeds your natural fear. This was something that was significant to me because in those moments, I was incredibly fearful. Change is not easy. The mission prayer in Community of Christ points out that it takes courage to risk something new. God seemed to be breaking all of the rules that I knew, and since I didn't know what the steps ahead looked like, I was pretty afraid. Now, at this point in my story, I'm reminded of what is sometimes referred to as the Great Commissioning. This story is found at the end of Matthew, and it features a resurrected Jesus who is meeting with his disciples, and their time is drawing to a close. These disciples have just been through a lot. We're talking serious trauma. Their friend, their teacher had just been killed. Violence is continuing to spread all throughout their community. And then suddenly Jesus returns in a very new and unexplainable way, just to turn around and leave again. <laughs> One might be tempted to call this a faith crisis rather than a faith adventure with God. And since humanity has sat with this story for a couple thousand years, we're able to see that Christianity really has been an adventure. But back to Matthew. The disciples head up the mountain just as Jesus had directed them. They were looking for Jesus, and when they saw him, some of them immediately started worshiping him. Others doubted. I must confess, I assume I would have been on Team Doubter. I mean, can you blame them after all they had just been through? But Jesus, grace-filled as ever, doesn't say a peep to his disciples about their reactions. He simply reminds them of who he is, where he gets his authority from, and then he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is with them. God is with them. Always present, always steady, even in their doubts. God, once again, seems to be breaking the rules. And just in case we need a refresher, what are these commandments that we need to obey? Love, love God, love neighbor, and one that we sometimes overlook, love ourselves. Everything else hangs on these commandments 
And this is what Jesus was reminding his disciples of. This is what he was telling them to preach to the world. I will be with you always. Remember to love, just love. Even though it would look different than it did before, the Christian community would continue to go on its faith adventure with God. And even if our own personal journeys look different than it did before, we are still part of that adventure. No one can take that away from us. A few years after I joined Community of Christ, I was helping clean my congregation's sanctuary. Tucked in a corner underneath a pew was a copy of the Doctrine and Covenants. It was a little tattered and a color that I hadn't seen before, so I knew it must be an older copy. I opened it up and the last section was 160, given by President Wallace B. Smith in 1996. I had just turned eight years old when Community of Christ voted to canonize these words. I took a picture of the book and posted it on social media with the caption, there's something really great about coming across an outdated Doctrine and Covenants that stops at section 160 and thinking, the story isn't over. There is so much more where this came from. Community of Christ, friends of the church and seekers, the story still isn't over. There is so much more where this came from, where you came from. Our faith adventure with God is ongoing, ever-changing, and exciting. But we choose every day whether or not we will go on this faith adventure with God. God shows up whether we like it or not. It's surprising and challenging, but divinely led. God's adventure is playing out right before our eyes. And we are being invited into that story. Beloved children of the restoration, when your willingness to live in sacred community of Christ's new creation exceeds your natural fear of spiritual and relational transformation, you will become who you are called to be. Who are you called to be? Where is God calling us to adventure together?